I'm a caricature artist and I draw people at live events and for illustrations. And in this video, I'm going to talk about line quality. Here's a drawing I did of myself not long ago. And I really took care to make the lines as nice as I could. I tried to use thin lines, thick lines, tapered lines, straights and curves together. And I think it caused the drawing to come out pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate it and lower the opacity. And now I'm going to trace over it. But this time, I'm using no line variation at all. All the lines are exactly the same thickness with no tapering on the ends. And this is the result. So I don't know about you, but... You tell me what you think. I think the one on the left is much better. And so sometimes the difference between a really good drawing and a bad drawing is the line quality. I'm going to go over this sketch again and do it again. But I'm going to emphasize the line quality as I go. This is the stuff I look for. And I think it's really helped me improve. I'm going to start off with the tear duct and the eye. And this pen is running out of ink, so I don't know if that it's going to help or hurt. But if you notice, I started off thin, got a little thicker in the middle, and then tapered off on the end. And the eyelid line, just a light line, maybe a little thicker there. See that kind of tapers? Now this bottom line, it should be as thin as possible. And the tear duct, I'm gonna let that line just disappear. And now, especially the lines there for the iris should be thin. Now the, the eyebrow. eyebrows are actually very thin so I'm making really thin lines and that reflects that it's a thin eyebrow it's sort of like see-through you can see the skin under the eyebrow and of course I've got the wrinkles around my bottom eyelids a little bit of a cheekbone protrusion there and you'll notice it starts off thin it gets a little thicker then it tapers off Bridge of the nose, again, thick and thin lines. The other eyelid, now I'm making it even a thinner line. So every opportunity I have, I'm making these lines tapered on both ends. And I know, um, basically from experience, where I like the super thin lines, especially around the eyes, but let's say if it was um, like a woman's eye with lots of eyelashes and mascara, that's when I would be drawing the line much thicker. A wrinkle under my eye. I want to de-emphasize that. I don't want nobody to know I didn't sleep good. <laughs> so I'm just drawing that line very thin. And then we've got eyebrow on this side. I'm just drawing a basic shape here, and then the lines are super thin. Okay, now this is the bottom of the nose, so the lines can get a little thicker. You notice this line compared to this line. This line is much thicker because it's on the bottom of the nose where there would be some shadow. And there's a nostril. And that's another thing I look for. I'm, I guess it comes from experience, like the, the part of the line that's away from the light source is going to be darker and thicker. Mm -hmm. 
I really just want to show you the lines and how I'm trying to get thick and thin lines. This is uh, the shape for the mustache. And then some thin lines in there because it's kind of light colored. Smile line wrinkle. Let's see. Okay, a forehead wrinkle. Now I don't want I want to de-emphasize that. And so I'm gonna make that also really thin. Okay, that's where I'm, the thinnest lines on my drawing are going to be, especially around the eyes. And it all, like I said, depends on the drawing. If someone has dark eyelashes, long dark eyelashes, then this line up top is going to be dark. Okay, now we're going to go to the beard. Now watch these lines. I'm going to really make them thick but they're still tapered. Do you see how it starts thin, gets thick? I'm kind of making it brushy like this because the, the beard in that area is kind of bushy. Now take a quick look at these lines compared to the lines around the eye. These are super thick compared to those lines. Okay, now the brow, the cheek line, and then the beard on the other side. And I'm just making it kind of bushy and shaggy. And this is kind of cartoony, that's why I'm using a lot of straight lines. They're super straight. You wouldn't really see that in, in real life, but you would like in an old style cartoon, like like a Scooby-Doo cartoon or something like that. And the angle of this drawing is perfect because you can't see my bald spot up there. which is always a good thing. So it looks like I have more hair than I actually do. So, let's see. Now we're gonna get the ear on there. I'm gonna add a, a longer neck than this other drawing. A collar line, which is these thick lines. I'm using some straight lines. So that's another part of line quality is straights and curves. So you see I've got curved lines here, and then right by it I've got these extreme straight lines. And the two next to each other in the same drawing can make it dynamic. I mean, I don't think this drawing is all that great to be honest with you, but now I'm Okay, drawing some lines in the beard, and you notice I'm using the thin tip on this marker. And look at the difference between these type of lines and then this outline, which is really thick. And another good way to get great lines is to, let me put on my glove real quick so this ink doesn't smear. Okay, is do this exercise. I'm starting with a thin line. I'm making it thick as I go. And then I'm coming back to thin. I saw a guy on YouTube a few years ago doing these type of exercises and I started doing it also. And another thing I did was to 
study professional artists and look at the line weight that they're using. And then another way to do it is to start with thick line, go thin, oops, then thick again without breaking the line like I did. And then the opposite, thin, thick, and then thin again. Thick, thin. And this way you're able to vary your lines all in the same line. And I can do this, that's with the Tombow pin. And I can do the same thing with this zebra pin. Although this zebra pin has a much sharper, smaller nib, I can still get thin lines. And if I press down and press to the side, they get a little thicker, then thin again. It doesn't have the range as the big marker, but I can still get a look at that thin line and then thick. And that's the way to practice your line work. And so there's thick and thin lines, there's curved lines against straight lines. And the more that I incorporate those into my drawings, the better they look. So let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you on the next video.